Hey guys, my name is Todd Gary. This is TD's Fat to Fit, your free online strength and conditioning coach in your pocket. I've been thinking recently that there are a lot of people out there sitting on the couch. They become sick and unhappy, unhealthy over many, many years, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. And I just wanted to show you what the rules that I live by, and this sounds a little cliche, but it's how to create the hero in yourself, how to be the hero in your own movie. Put yourself in the best position to be healthy, happy, vibrant, and become the hero in that movie. And I just wanted to tell you what the progression that I was, that I went through when I was sick, fat, and unhappy, miserable in my own existence. The guy that couldn't look in the mirror to the guy that smiles every day and is a completely changed person over many years. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes practice. It may sound preachy at times. I get excited over things when I talk about this because I know how miserable I used to be. I know how fat I really was and how unhappy I really was at that time in my life. It drove me to very dark places. And now being in a different position in life because of friends and family and because of happiness within myself, I can now truly say I'm happy. I'm happy who I see in the mirror. And that is expressed in every part of my life. So let's get into this create the body of a Greek god, but be be even better, be the hero in your own movie. But as you know, I'm not a doctor. Pops be pulling up like I'm passing out drugs. Nah, nah, nah. I'm a bodybuilder, not a doctor. If you have concerns or questions, call your doctor or even better, your functional medicine practitioner. Obviously, this is for entertainment and entertainment for purposes only. This is about my life and what I did. Maybe some of this will help you. So let's get into it. So the rules that I typically follow... This is me at 320 pounds, and then a year and a half later at 212, just just after my show in, uh, I think, late 2017. A major progression. I still wasn't quite happy with myself at this point. It still had a lot of mental growth and spiritual growth to come, but this was at least the physical transition from being miserable, fat, and unhealthy to at least getting the physical side taken care of. And... The rest kind of followed over the years. So first off, you have to have a positive energy. You got to get nutrition in check. You got to exercise. You have to have sleep. You truly need to get your blood tested. Think about supplements, some pharmaceuticals, depending on those supplements and drug testing, the the blood testing, the the results that you get from that. And then you got to look, check your relationships and then meditation. So those are the general rules. Positive energy, prioritize yourself. Put yourself first. You have to be selfish about your relative health and overall well-being. Ask for help. This is something that I have to really say is everything that I've learned, I've learned from other people. I've learned from asking. I've learned from reading and and doing a lot of research on my own. But, But knowing other people that have done this, I asked them how they did it. Stop accepting your unhealthy fat state. It's not your fault. You're not fat because you're lazy. I can't stress that enough. It's not fat. You're not fat for any other reason other than the fact that we eat the wrong foods and do the wrong things. Visualize your best version. As this quote says from Tony Robbins, whatever you hold in your mind in a consistent basis is exactly what you will experience in your life. And it takes time. But if you continuously vision envision your best self, your best version, you will become that best version. Realize your potential. Keep a positive mindset and achieve your goals every day. Small steps. Find your strategy. Figure out what tactics you have to do to achieve that strategy and see your goal accomplished. Visualize yourself happy and healthy. What do you look like? What are you? What is your job like? What is your relationship like? And every single day, make steps towards that. Don't let negativity into your life. Stay focused on your goal and accept it will not be easy, but trust the process. Every single day, if you're doing the right things, the right things will happen. And if you continuously envision that goal of the person that you wanna be and how you wanna look, you will ultimately get there. Keep asking questions, keep learning, keep educating yourself and trying, it will happen. 
way sooner than you think it will. Because if it took you 10, 20, 30 years to get where you're at, you're talking six months to a year and you'll progress to someone you've never seen before. Trust me, I've literally looked in the mirror and didn't recognize myself in some days because of how quick the transition takes place. And that's a miracle. Truly, that's something we oversee all the time. We get sick over 20 or 30 years. Our body is so resilient. And in 12, 14 months, you can lose 100 pounds of fat, redo or undo all this autoimmune disease. All these skin issues and hair issues and acne can all be resolved in months without any medication. That's a miracle. And that shows you how powerful our body is. Let's get into nutrition. As I've said before, stop eating uh, foods that you're allergic to, carbohydrates, processed foods, oils that are industrial seed oils. If you won't take your shirt off at the pool or the beach, do something about it. Fats are your friend, carbs are your enemy, protein is your family. That's a new slogan I'm gonna say is, uh, carbs, your, carbs are the enemy, fats are your friend, protein is your family. Protein you need for the rest of your life, as much as you can possibly eat, you can't eat enough protein. Fats, on the other hand, fats are your friend. They come and go, you pick and choose. Carbohydrates, it's the enemy. Don't eat carbohydrates and you will see an amazing process, an amazing transition. Stop making excuses. Do the right thing. Your body is your temple, so put only the right nutrients in your body. Eat fats and proteins and see how quickly your body transitions and watch how quickly you change. Don't starve yourself, especially when you're eating fats and proteins, you won't be hungry. But if you are, eat more fats and proteins. If you're not, stop eating. Again, don't starve yourself. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't. Simple rule, if it was alive or God made it, eat it. Meaning plants and animal foods. The exception is fruit. Don't eat fruit. Not right away. Once you get in shape and you get your your body and your and your physique that you want, you can add in fruits because you're it can handle it. But up front, you truly are allergic to sugar. So stop eating sugar. And fruits are a high sugar complex food. Berries, strawberries, and blueberries are an exception to that rule. So all plants and animals, animal products, no fruit but you can have berries, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, that sort of thing. If it came in a box or a bag, don't eat it. Walk the perimeter of the grocery store. So when you walk in, skip the bakery. Try not to hit the bakery. <laughs> don't hit the bakery. Go to the meat section, pick out fish, red meat, whatever meat you love. Cheese, if you can eat it, hopefully you can. Skip the yogurt section because yogurt has more sugar than regular soda does. Yo yogurt has a ton of sugar in it. So stay in the perimeter of the grocery store. Eat real foods. And again, eat when you're hungry. Don't eat when you're not. Wake up in the morning and typically start your day with a very big, high fat, high protein meal. I can. Typically, every single day, unless I'm not home, I'll have seven eggs, probably two or three tablespoons of uh, cream cheese in that egg and my omelet. And then I have about a half a cup of mozzarella cheese on top of that crispy cheese. It's an awesome omelet. I have a couple tablespoons of butter that I cook it in, coffee with cream and my iced tea, and I'm ready to go. I have to remind myself to eat throughout the day because of that meal sets me up in such a ghrelin suppressed way and leptin has come in because of so much fat i literally need to eat tell myself to eat throughout the day and that's the power of a low carbohydrate diet you're never hungry if you want to you can if i'm trying to increase the amount of protein that i'm taking in to get you know bigger and stronger I need to literally set an alarm on my phone so I remember to eat. Otherwise, I could literally go until five or six o'clock. I get up at seven o'clock, I have an omelet at eight, and I don't need to eat until dinner time. Literally don't need to. I do. I eat a lot of protein throughout the day because I'm trying to get bigger and stronger. I'm a bodybuilder. But those that are not bodybuilders don't need to do this. You can eat one meal, huge meal in the morning, and you don't need you're good until probably dinner. So 
it just gives you an idea. Try to do that on carbohydrates. Good luck. You're going to be ripping your arm off at about three hours in. You just can't do it. And that's why when you add in rice and pasta and bread, you're always hungry because it's releasing ghrelin. The ghrelin is the response and the, the empty stomach syndrome. Ghrelin is the uh, hormone the brain releases when you're hungry. When you eat carbohydrates, ghrelin is released. Leptin is released when fat is metabolized and you're eating fat. So leptin is what you typically want because that tells you you're full. It's giving you that. And that's what the GLP-1 uh, peptides do. Ozempic, semiglutide, trisepatide, Manjaro, all of those drugs that all the people are on at this point, they are a GLP-1 mechanism or GLP-1 agonist. It is a ghrelin suppressive drug it suppresses ghrelin and releases the leptin it's a stomach paralysis drug so it makes stomach basically stop stomach from digesting and it really slows down dig digestion so your stomach feels full all the time and thus you don't eat but you can get the same effect by eating fat and you're healthy and you don't have to stick a, a needle in your stomach every day well you might need to do that for, with other drugs depending on if you're a trt replacement but we'll get into that exercise stop thinking you need to suffer relentless hours of running or cardio or on the treadmill on the stepper you can if you want to but you don't have to start lifting heavy weights three to four days a week and lift as often and as heavy as you possibly can lift like your life depends on it because it does the more muscle you mass you have, the longer you live. They are completely coming out with all these new studies that the muscle wasting sarcopenia is what is killing people. The older you get, the less protein you eat, the less protein you are digesting, the less muscle you have, the more wasting you have, the more frail you get, the more fractures you have, the more you are susceptible to death in old age. Keep that muscle building perspective do more weight-bearing exercise and you will become healthier than you've ever been in your life. Stop delaying things. Start today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Be selfish about your health. How many times, oh, well, I got a birthday coming up or I got Christmas and Thanksgiving's coming. Oh, I'll start after the new year and the new year comes like, well, I'll start next week. I got to do this or I'm going on vacation now. I got to go on a vacation. I go after vacation. There's always something in life that makes you delay it. Put yourself first, put your health first, go to the gym, become friends with people at the gym, ask for help, get a trainer. You don't have to hire a trainer forever. Have them teach you the basics and then go on your own. It's simple. It's a learn, life is about learning. So go in the gym, learn nutrition, learn how to work out properly and then go on your own and get in there and get out. You're in and out in 45 minutes. So you need an hour a day typically three to four days a week. You can find that time. Put your phone down and you'll be on the way. So again, find a way. All, allow yourself to focus on what your motivation is and get in there and get make a habit of it, right? 28 days, four weeks. That's why typically rehabs are 28 days because it creates a habit. Don't get discouraged. The beginning sucks. You're sore. It's difficult. But stop telling yourself you can't. Tell yourself you can, tell yourself you why you want this and just get through the first few weeks. Go slow, learn the process and work yourself into it. And you will love what you're looking like. You'll love how you feel and you will continue to go. Work out with intensity and watch your body change daily. Every single day you will see change if you're doing the right things. And if, if those things are kind of lagging, that's okay. Keep putting one foot forward. Again, another quote from Tony Robbins, no matter how many mistakes you make or how slow your progress, you're still way ahead of everyone who isn't trying. So think of that as the person that's sitting on the couch, you not doing anything, you're way ahead of what you were. And think of all the things that are improving in your life by doing these steps. Sleep is equally as important to exercise and nutrition. You need to get eight hours of sleep every night. Go to bed early. Don't wake up to an alarm. Take a nap if you need to. If you need to get, if you can't get eight hours at night, take a nap during the day if you're able to. Check for sleep issues. This is huge. Snoring or sleep apnea? Go get a sleep study, get a CPAP, change your mattress. Lack of quality sleep exponentially increases your chances for Alzheimer's and dementia. 
high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, stroke, and death. Literally, you're choking yourself. When you're snoring, you are choking yourself. It's like somebody's taking a noose and wrapping it around your neck. There's only a matter of time until you die. This literally kills people in their sleep, more than we want to accept. And if it doesn't kill you in your sleep, it kills you during the day. And you get all these other syndromes and diseases based on the fact that you're not sleeping. Sometimes you can't even burn fat because you're not sleeping. Get your sleep in check. Figure out what your sleep issues are and correct them. Eight hours of sleep. Don't wake up to an alarm. If you need to, go to bed early. Improve your sleep and be proud of it. So many people I know are like, no, you die when you sleep. And you got to work and you got to get up early and go to bed late and... Now, if you want dementia and you want all these cardiovascular issues, yeah, go for it. Otherwise, be proud of your sleep. Be really go to bed and be proud that you're going to bed and get as much quality sleep and it will make your life longer and more healthy. Blood testing. First, what's your blood pressure? Figure out if it's in high or moderate range and try to figure out what you need to do to reduce your blood pressure. There is no lower acceptable range. Low is good. Low pressure on the heart just will make you live longer. It's better on your kidneys, better on your liver. Just get your blood pressure checked and make sure it's low. What's your fasting glucose? Is it below 100? If it's not, you're probably pre-diabetic. If it's above 125 fasting, you, ha you're, you have diabetes. If you're not doing anything about it, that's going to be a problem. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. You can fix this in a week, literally. A lot of people who have been on years and years of high dose insulin because they're a diabetic, they get on a keto diet or whatever you wanna call it, carnivore, keto, paleo, no carbohydrates, and they're off insulin potentially within a week. A couple weeks, they've at least reduced their insulin intake dramatically. So this is something that can be fixed. Again, in the medical literature, diabetes is incurable. Like I had Crohn's disease, incurable, but I'm cured. How? Carbohydrates. Get rid of them, and I cured Crohn's. Hmm. Interesting. Diabetes, you have it? Get rid of carbohydrates. You will cure your autoimmune di issue of diabetes. If not, you will drastically improve it. Get your sugars below 100. Also, what is your fasting insulin? Same thing. Looking for insulin resistance. But we're going to say, if you can't take your shirt off, you probably have insulin resistance. It's the whole mechanism. So accept that that's probably true. What is your testosterone? If it's below 400, if it's in about 200 or 100, you're way low. You want your you want your testosterone or free testosterone above 400. 600 is even better. You don't have to go crazy thinking about this, but go to a TRT clinic or talk to your doctor and figure out what your uh, free testosterone is available testosterone and if you need to get on trt you cannot imagine how good you feel when you don't know how well you can feel because your testosterone is low i've got many friends who have had low testosterone and then got on trt and they're like i had no idea how bad i felt because of how good they now feel trt replacement is a lifesaver it increases muscle mass it decreases fat or it increases fat metabolism. You can really improve your physique just by getting on TRT. Not a cycle, just a 200 milli milligrams per week, one shot a week, and you will be back to normal, back to where you were when you were 25. Find out what your vitamin D3 level is. Most likely it's low. Unless you're in the sun for two hours a day naked, you probably have low vitamin D3, meaning between well, uh, low is under 30, that's deficient, most people are. You want your vitamin D3 between 50 and 100. Up to 100 is fine, over 100, they say it's a little excessive, but there's really no evidence of, of high toxicity of vitamin D3. There's been countless studies that really is a very rare situation. So you wanna do high dose vitamin D3 every single day. Get your levels above 50 to, uh, to about 100 nanograms for, per deciliter. What are your triglycerides? Triglyc triglycerides are a mechanism of too much sugar in the blood. It turns into a triglyceride through the liver, and thus you have too much fat in the blood. So get your triglycerides checked. C-reactive protein, a marker of inflammation. Check, get a thyroid panel, uh, you know, thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, T4, free T3. What is your available total T3? These are metabolism 
uh, hormones that you can really influence one way or another. Most people are hypothyroid, meaning they have low thyroid, but that is a mechanism of all the different mechanisms within the body. And if you have metabolic disease, your hormones are dysregulated. Again, not to worry. Once you regulate your hormones through the diet, get your mitochondrial health back to normal, this will probably regulate. But there are drugs you can take to make this better and help you along this process. Get a micronutrient panel and figure out what vitamin B levels are, vitamin B12. Check folate and other minerals like uh, magnesium. And overall, look at your blood as an overall biomarker in what your health is. Most likely you can influence a lot of these through supplements. What supplements? I typically supplement every day with vitamin D3 Everybody probably should be, unless you're in the sun for multiple hours a day, basically naked. Most often you're gonna be low. Magnesium complex, not oxide, I can't say that enough. Magnesium oxide does not absorb. It absorbs in your body, it's like 6% bioavailable. For, so 94% of magnesium oxide that you buy, most store brand magnesium is magnesium oxide. 94% is going in the toilet. So go on Amazon, buy magnesium glycinate, threonate, chelated. Watch out for magnesium citrate because it will literally send you to the bathroom because it's a kind of a natural uh, diuretic or it's a natural laxative, not a diuretic. It's a la natural laxative. Be careful. It's potent, <laughs> very potent. So find a magnesium complex that doesn't have oxide and is low in citrate and you'll find a, a good mood stabilizing relaxant that helps you with sleep and overall mood omega-3s you need to high dose omega-3s all this new data about how protective cardiovascularly omega-3s is from japan is a side effect of how much fish they eat small fish we want to eat a lot of small fish or or supplement with high dose omega-3s like form 4000 ius of of omega-3s every day. Turmeric, curcumin, basically an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, pre and probiotic, digestive enzymes to help your body start to digest the, the compounds better that you're eating because your, your system is sluggish. Your system is, is toxic. You need to help it. So buy some pepsin or hydrochloric acid, tablets and they help digest your food better. If you have a lot of gas, if you have a lot of bloating, this can help all kinds of issues, gut issues, because if you're having those problems, antacid issues, antacids are your are your problem. The problem is, is that you're lowering the acidity level within your gut. So the, the food sits there, it ferments and creates gas, and then that gas burps up and then it hits your esophagus and it burns. That's, you know, that's all your issues with heartburn. You take an antacid to get rid of the acid, but that's making the problem that much worse. And that's why all, so many people are addicted to these antacids. Start taking apple cider vinegar or a digestive enzyme like pepsin, hydrochloric acid, and they will help you start to digest your food and get rid of those acid, acid problems. Supplement with taurine, six grams a day. Supplement with creatine and arginine, nicotinamide mononucleotide, increase NAD. How about mushrooms like lion's mane, ashwagandha, turkey tail, chaga? All of these improve immune function. They're nootropics. They help with brain function, improve memory, mood, and sleep. They will help you through all of these other issues that you've had based on your diet and your toxicity, and they will start to really help you get healthier. Supplements are very powerful. Vitamin D3 alone is a hormone. Even though it's a vitamin, it's a hormone. They should, it's basically a pseudo steroid. And magnesium and omega threes as well. They're incredibly powerful supplements. You don't need a prescription to go get them. They're just in the shelf at any store. So go grab those. They'll do you a lot of good. Drug therapy. TRT, if it's low, get on TRT. You know, it's a single dose a week, one shot a week, 200 milligrams typically is what's the baseline and you see where your levels are, but obviously have a doctor check that out and they can monitor that over a period of time. Also, 
short term, get on blood pressure meds if you need to. The long term, once you reduce inflammation and you get your body and your toxicity levels down, you lower inflammation. Yeah, lowered inflammation is lower stress on the blood. And then the re increased supplements like creatine and uh, taurine will help blood pressure subside. Once those take effect, you can subside or wean off of the blood pressure meds or get off them completely. Reduce inflammation and biomarkers from cardiac issues and get off statins. Unless you've already had a heart attack, that's a different situation. Get the advice of a functional medicine practitioner. Stabilize your cholesterol by diet and exercise, not through this CoQ enzyme, CoQ10 enzyme agonist, which is what a statin does. Statins cause dramatic weight gain. They cause your glucose to rise. They increase your chances for diabetes dramatically. They cause joint pain body pain statins are a terrible drug and the pharmaceutical benefit of a cardiovascular risk increase or decrease is far less than any one of these other issues that you would have such as exercise and diet dramatically improve your cholesterol levels improve your cholesterol levels i didn't say lower them i said improve them because it's not about high or low cholesterol has nothing to, high or low cholesterol has nothing to do with cardiovascular risk. It's, it's the ratios and your body's regulatory amount of cholesterol in your body. Cholesterol is needed. Your brain is 90% cholesterol. Some say 80, some say 70. Let's just say a lot of your brain is cholesterol. A lot of the cell structure within your body is cholesterol. All of the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, aldosterone, they're all made from cholesterol. Your body makes it. It can't be that bad if our body makes it. Inflammation is bad. High blood pressure is bad. Statins are a bad drug. The only real type of demographic which statins improve are people that have already had a heart attack. So go to a functional medicine practitioner and get that checked out and see what kind of changes you can make. Relationships. This is a huge thing for me. Bad relationships make a bad life. Find a community and pull away from negativity. Be available, open to new relationships that are positive and good. Join a gym, get a trainer, talk to people who have succeeded. Try to get a partner who also will join you in this crusade. Find new hobbies, start hiking, mountain biking, mountain climbing, um, working out together, motivate each other, be there for each other, cook for each other, make each other healthy and motivate each other in positive way. This will improve your overall well-being and health. It'll get you closer, have better sex more often, better exercise because sex is exercise. Be grateful for yourself and believe in yourself. Have a positive affirmation every single day. Look in the mirror and smile. Reduce that negative self-hatred. Stop talking and stop thinking self-destructively. All of those bad thoughts, I'm fat, I'm too, you know, too weak, I can't do it, I have too much pain, I can't this, I can't that. It's all negative self-talk. Stop. Start telling yourself what you can do and what not what you can't do. Thoughts become things. That's something that Kai Green always says. Thoughts become things. So if you think positive and you think yourself as a better person, you will become a better person. Last thing is meditation. I try to meditate a lot throughout the day. I meditate in the morning and I meditate at night before bed. Pray and be thankful for your relationships, thankful for your family. Talk to God, ask for guidance, ask for forgiveness, ask for good energy. Look around you and find positive aspects about your life. Stop watching the news. <laughs> Stop constantly being on social media. I know that's kind of a, a general term. Everybody says, Stop doing social media. Okay, yeah. But literally, limit yourself. If you find yourself for scrolling over and over, put your phone down. Start looking on YouTube. Find documentaries or find something you can learn about, something that you're interested in, and use that productive time. Or put your phone down and go to the gym. That's even better. Practice smiling. Fake it until you make it. Literally, I had to do this. I was never really smiling. I couldn't do it. I just was so angry at myself, so pissed off at the world. I literally just started forcing myself to smile. And you, you really become who you think. So if you're always thinking, be happy, be happy, that improves your self-awareness. It really does. Again, your body is your temple. Treat it as such. 
Create the body and mind that people envy and look up to. Create the hero and be the hero in your movie. I know I sounded preachy at times in this, but this is truly how I have transitioned my entire life from an absolute unhealthy, unhappy slob to somebody that I'm really proud of today, somebody that I'm close to my family with, I'm in a loving relationship, I'm just happy about everything, and I made that happen. I asked for help, I got a lot of help from my family, thank God, I couldn't have done it alone, but a lot of it came from here. I know some of it came from here. You have to do the right things, and you have to make the first step. Do that. Try to make the right decisions every single day. Again, I'm sorry if I sounded preachy. I hope you like the content. Please like, subscribe, comment below. My name is Todd Derry. This is TD's Fact to Fit. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.